Hey, so, um, this is a quick little model of uh, your birds on a wire and uh, basically made a Redner birds on a wire net logo model. And what we're going to do uh, as we look back at uh, this, this view here, we're going to have birds coming in. Uh, when a bird lands, it'll have a I call it a distance, uh, avoid distance, and that's a parameter. And if it's, uh, when it lands, it'll look for any birds within that avoid distance, and they'll they'll fly away. So we're just gonna do a simple uh, viz with these as, these as little uh, circles, and look at the long run distribution of the gaps. And we're gonna start, when we uh, calculate the gaps, we'll you know start from the, Leftmost, well, each bird will look to its left and find the closest one. Uh, so I'm kind of for now also ignoring these edge gaps here. Um, we could make this a, 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 a boundary condition that wraps around, a uh, periodic boundary condition, or make it look a, live on a torus, uh, but, uh, or it's one dimensional. So um, <clears throat> so here's here's the model. So it's, And I'm showing this too as a, um, a very uh, teachable model um, where the amount of code in here, if we look uh, in the code, this is the full program. Uh, and the uh, visualization, uh, the visualizations are uh, uh, kind of built in in NetLogo we're running here. And I'll just kind of take you through this real quick here. Um, basically, we have a setup command where we just clear the world and reset the ticks. And the big thing is uh, every step, we're going to create a turtle, which is the legacy term coming out of Seymour Papert's group and logo. Uh, but we could call them birds and just with one more line of code, uh, define a breed of birds. But I wanted to keep this as short as possible. So this is uh, a, a when a, an agent comes in, it'll create its uh, shape and it'll um, set a random uh, x uh, location and it'll start off on zero by default and in fact this heading is no longer used here I'm even going to delete this part uh, in a different way before and then we're just going to ask other turtles in radius given an avoid distance which is defined in this slider here when you put down and make a slider you can make a global variable and what's the range and we can sweep this actually from 0.1 to 10 or you know this world happens to be the world size right now is uh plus 50 and minus 50 in the x dimension and just uh plus two and minus two in the y dimension so we have, we're 101 by five so so we're sweeping potentially up to 10 of those pixels but we can bring that up to uh, any number we want <laughs> uh, when I actually parameter sweeped um, I believe I went uh, a little higher. So uh, coming back to the code. Um, so if we do see a, a, any other turtles to the bird that's landing in some radius in that distance, uh, it'll tell those, those agents to die. And then <clears throat> after we do that, we'll measure the gaps. And that's just a little function here where we're using links like in a network uh, to, uh, to put a link between these, which is basically the wire, but also it's an easy thing to measure as a gap. So we'll ask all the links we made in the previous iteration die, and then we'll ask all of the birds to see if uh, there's any other a set of candidate to the other turtles with their X coordinate greater than themselves. So look at all the birds to the right of me. And if there are any birds to the right of me, Create a link with the minimum one of these candidates uh, based on the distance to myself, and that's it. Uh, and then that will let us uh, do some measurement because now we can measure these links. So here we go, running this thing. We'll set the avoidance, uh, avoid distance, and you can see birds coming in. And we're now uh, plotting a histogram of these link lengths, which I'm calling gap width. And we can look at the mean of these gaps, uh, the standard deviation of them. 
And then of the left-hand side, I'm plotting um, this constant line here. So I'm taking the width of the world, 101, divided by avoid distance, 0.98, which, you know, naively when I started this off, I thought, well, this will just approach that. But I think you're uh, onto a very cool, subtle thing here where it doesn't uh, approach that. And I'll just show you here when we're very low, that, that's a very smooth uh, function. Let me uh, start that off again. But as we get up into the higher <coughs> uh, avoid distances and get to fewer and fewer birds, well, then you're going to have a lot more popping around and variance um, between that. So let me, uh, let me show a bigger number here, like 10. So you can see this. Uh, still, it seems like it wants to be down at that this this value down here but you're seeing uh m you know much fewer uh birds on the wire uh, here so the next step of this is as you play around with it is um using and this is important in education you know it's one thing to write a model but now let's go ahead and sweep the parameters and it's very easy to do in net logo where you're going to make an experiment and I'm gonna, it automatically you know, puts in some global variables for us. And I, I said, I'm gonna sweep from 0 0.1 on avoid distance up to 10, stepping every 0.1 and run it 30 times uh, for each one of those settings. And when the when it's done, take get the uh, mean of the, the gaps, which was the length of the links. Um, and then um, get the standard deviation of that same thing. And that's it. So if we're doing it 30 times, uh, you know, with up to uh, that's basically 3,000 runs. And when we run that, uh, we can run eight in parallel or 12 in parallel. And we'll go ahead and uh, save that out to disk. And I'll say I'm doing this today at um, 20, April 24th. And the second time, and I'll go ahead and save that. And now you can see um, it's going to run eight of these at the same time. We can have it. We can watch what it's doing along the way, but it's uh, running the first one, and we're having it. I'm having it step up to, I believe, uh, 500 time steps before I take the uh, statistic. And so now you can see we're already in a 300 runs, 400 runs of our thousand. And we'll uh, pause here and kind of like Julia Childs. I already have a spreadsheet uh, finished here. And so when we get the results, um, you can see here, um, <clears throat> basically it kicks out the, the data. Uh, you, know, and here, you know, we ran this experiment. And then here's the different columns of uh, information or parameters. The run number of the, the uh, um, just a run ID. And notice they're running in random order, somewhat random order, because we're running in eight uh, simulations in parallel. And then here's what the avoid distance was. Oh, I guess we stopped this at 200 steps instead of 500. And then, you know, here is um, our order parameters. What's the mean length, uh, length and the standard deviation? As we pop this up into a pivot table, or you could pregnant this into Google Sheets or R, right? But getting... Letting uh, students uh, use whatever is at hand. Uh, usually, uh, Google Sheets is where I'll take them into, um, or Python. And and now um, we won't go into you know they learn how to do pivot tables, but basically we're now plotting because we have thirty runs per setting. Um, you know, pivot tables let us uh, collapse that and find the mean of those, and basically get this nice little. Uh, relationship and putting a trend line on that, just a linear fit, um, pretty close to two, right? And R is pretty good, R squared. And then uh, looking at the standard deviation, if we're running at 30 times per setting, well, what was the variance of those runs uh, with respect to that, the mean of their um, gap? And I had a little outlier here. So I ran the second time with a, more runs. I think this first time, this result had only 10. The second one uh, had 30, and um, <clears throat> and you can see, um, well, here I'm also just plotting the standard deviation as we in increase the, uh, I didn't label the um, 
axis here, but this is the gap, uh, gap um, or the avoid distance. And you can see as the avoid distance goes up, you get a lot more uh, variance in the run in a standard deviation. Um, so that's, um, if, and then the other thing I just want to show you if we save, so if you want to, I'll show you where you can get this code. So the easiest way is I'm going to save this out as a, a web HTML file, fully embedded, includes the, uh, the language and the um, platform as well as the model. So we'll save that. And I just put it up on a server here. And now it's a little bit, look, it looks a little bit different uh, graphically, but you can come in and if you change this to inter, uh, to, away from interactive, you can change and change code or mess with it. But the nice thing, it's up on the web and uh, you can run it here and you can give this uh, URL to somebody and, um, you know, make your make a presentation with that. But right now it's up here at redfish.com models, redner birds on a wire dot HTML. Um, I think that's everything I wanted to show you. But I think, oh, just, and I'm just curious, thinking through why is, so this ratio here is number of birds and then taking the width of the world divided by this avoid distance and looking at that ratio, right? And let me start this guy off again. And we're definitely, you know, it's typically twice or I would say, you know, half of um, the number of birds you expect or the gaps are um, twice as big. So I, um, I yeah, it'd be here, interesting to think of your explanation. But I definitely think of it as uh, as you arrive, I mean, it's a very rare case that you're going to get exactly the gap width and half the time you're going to get rid of them get get rid of a neighbor and now that area is twice as big but I, i'm still trying to reason about it i don't have a good ex, um, a good clear sense as i just saw this number today and then so it's a kind of like the the equivalent one with the dynamics and the economics of giving someone a dollar at the room at random uh, yashenko's uh, model back in the early 2000s and getting you know, getting the log normal distribution. So I think this is a nice little simple model, especially for students. Uh, you can explain it very quickly and get them to implement it and then think about uh, the distribution. So, so hats off on to you. Uh, to you, I'm getting a really cool, simple model that has an interesting output. Uh, that's it. Thanks.